Welcome to section number four. We're going to be talking about tray columns. And as the name implies, it's essentially a unit operation, a column which has trays. So the main concept is the stages through all the column, which each one of the stages will favor equilibrium. Okay, so what are we going to see specifically is a brief introduction. How do they work? The different type of uh, trays, the most common ones, sieve trays, valve trays, bubble cap trays. Then we start seeing a little bit more technical uh, things referring to trays, sizing, materials, the how it is operated, maintenance, and so on. Then we continue with the internals, how we favor the, the downcomer, how it falls to water, how we need to add a wear, which is nothing more than the height it needs in order to have a small amount of liquid and the bubble passes through and then we get to the manhole, the nozzles, the sizes and so on those uh, aspects are just theoretical, there is no numbering of course if you were to design this, which I don't think is the labor of a chemical engineer you need to know about it, but actually what's going to do that is much more into the mechanical area what is the spacing, the sizing, the size of holes, etc. The important part as a chemical engineer or process engineer is the design and modeling. How are you going to model it? Country current, of course, we've seen that before, it's very important. Uh, we're going to see first for dilute models and then for concentrated models. We're going to start with the operation line. Remember that first you have the equilibrium line, which is independent of what of type of operation you use, what unit operation you use, that is the equilibrium line. And then we start with the unit or the operation line. It depends on the unit or the process you want to specify. You start with the top uh, of the column and then you start with the bottom, you get the lines and you will see that you have a relationship between the equilibrium line and the operation line. Remember that the operation line is the actual value and the equilibrium line is the, let's say, the theoretical or the best case scenario line. Then we will see how to get the minimum solvent flow rate, that is, how much solvent do we need in order to not uh, have excess solvent. There is always a number which is the minimum and typically in real life we do not use the minimum, we use a maybe 50% extra, 80%, 30% and so on. Then we analyze more into the number of stages, how to identify the number of stages, the mass balances behind that, the energy balances, and then we start with the mccabe Thiel method, which is using distillation as well. How to identify the number of stages, you graph it, you draw it in the graph, and then we pass to the analytical method, which is Krenzer's equation. We get to know the dilution absorption factor, and then we will work with plenty of exercises. Case scenario, how to design a packed column, maybe pressure drops, uh, velocity profiles, and so on. The main idea is that you get most of the tray column uh, designing and calculations. Also very important to consider in the number of stages, the actual efficiencies, more free efficiency, stage efficiency, and so on. At the end of the section, I have two dynamic uh, simulations, so you can compare, uh, let's say, easier the what-if scenarios. What if we change the inlet concentration? What will happen if we add more solvent? Typically, when you add more solvent, you get a better distribution, but it's expensive. So you cannot change that independent of money. Also, you will, you will be talking about the total inlet in the gas, the total number of stages, and so on. So it's the simulations, uh, you can find them as dynamic simulations, are very interesting, it's a must view video.